morning. Uh, welcome to my uh, RT talk. So for today, uh, by the way, I'm Patrick Fernandez. Uh, um, I'm an artist uh, living, uh, working and um, working here and at Regina, Saskatchewan. Uh, I was born in the Philippines and I moved here in 2017 uh, to join my wife who has been uh, here for six, eight years. Um, so I've been an artist uh, professionally 15 years and uh, I've been uh, doing painting, mixed media uh, and some installations, but I'm mostly uh, focused on doing some 2D works paintings. Uh, I use acrylic uh, as my medium most of the time and yeah so I'll be discussing with you uh, trying to welcome you with, with the my, my recent uh, body of work that I'm showing here at the woods art space this is uh it's called luntian uh, luntian is a tagalog uh, old tagalog word which, which means green so um, basically it's the concept was um, was about like experiencing uh, immigration, but if you're an immigrant, usually the most the common the most common connotation for you if you're going away out of your country is that you're searching for a greener pasture, and uh, this is the main concept in my show that I want to see. I I want to let the people feel that. Um, maybe there's really hope in uh, do you find hope in uh, finding a greener pasture or is there really a greener pasture like that's the question that I want to see uh, let the viewers see on my show so um, I'll be doing a walkthrough and uh, so there's something just like really weird right now because I, I don't have the bottom. So I'll, I'll be showing you around uh, my exhibit. So this is the word art space. It's located at uh, the Junction Creative Studio. We're at the second floor at Matthew in Regina. So if you're, if you will be able to join and see this in person, it will be great. Um, so my main piece is uh, this one. I hope you can see it. So, so this is a, I name it uh, Punla Sa Bagong Simula. Uh, it's a Tagalog word, it's a Tagalog uh, title, which means uh, seed for the new beginning. Uh, so it's the largest painting in the show. It uh, features several figures with one dying rooster proud boat with four guardians doing elements, a uh, fish and a crab coming along the ride and a gopher seemingly in fear of being run over. Uh, through the head of a main figure appears to be severe. We see no emotion or pain in his facial features as we he lays calmly while accepting his fate. A crab sitting on top of his temple points to crab mentality that we seem unbothered by this hanger on. His four sailing companions were all picked up out in their own ways as, an, as the appearance of the main figure may be likened to a plant grafted for planting somewhere else. Beside uh, the multicolored is a fish as another symbol of sustenance. As the boat slides to the floorboards, it encounters a gopher, a hardworking creature known to have a mastery of both above and below ground. Energy suffuses the, the figures with Chartus glow, teeming with life force and inspiration as they take on the rest of the journey towards greener pasture. So uh, that's my piece. Another, another wor uh, body support that I created for this show is an eight pieces portraits of female figures, uh, which are this. So these are my eight figures. So 
those are my female figures and and I, I have uh, common uh, elements that I use. I use uh, folder, uh, folded paper cranes for wishes and paper flowers for creativity blooming appear in different guises in this another scene, which may be considered as my muses. It's actually maybe my female version or uh, like I, I just want to it's from my imagination it's it's i just want to to um, connect something from from my kind of so uh these are in titan and the titles of of these uh paintings are basically my motivational quotes that i wrote in my in my notebook so some titles are anything can happen anything can be uh, I am a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. It's just actually a song. I still have something to hope for. Keep your pace to the sun and you will never see shadows. May your choices reflect your hope. Only in the darkness will you see stars and these eyes have longing in them. And this is a waking dream. So this may be mixed and shuffled for the best messages, but the viewer needs to experience it for that moment. The, pace, the paces evolve from fresh youth to wisdom-filled women spouting sage advice. One thing uh, for the dawn to break is another piece that I did. Harkens to uh, foliage textured poor creatures from my past exhibition with doleful eyes on a pace direct confrontation, which whoever has the courage to open their eye. So, Another uh, body work that I did is uh, this abstract work. These are these are named coexist. Okay. I'll take you closer to it. So. So coexist may be considered an experimental work. Uh, I usually don't do uh, non-representational work. Uh, this is my first public exposition that I, I displayed uh, a non-representational work. But uh, this is like a uh, coral-like growths and floral clusters that read and shift their position and rotation. This is a nod to shifting tides in Canada, which may be considered as country that serve as melting pot that fuses varying cultures together in one bubbling cauldron of diversity. The strange features of the subjects cannot be associated with one particular classification that portray different species striving together which is an ideal setup considering the inequality, division, and racism that still pervade society. So, I have a picture of my installation. It's, uh, it's called Bagahe, or Baggage. Uh, I'll put here. So baggage is uh, it actually signifies of the overseas Filipino workers. So this installation actually it's uh, composed of my my old luggage, the first luggage that I used coming here in Canada. That's uh, I I found the uh, a sculpture and rabbit sculpture and some plants and some styrofoam styrofoam sealant and kind of kind of created this uh, so this association with some aspect of self such as egoistic pride outdated relationship regrettable regrettable choices and discarded dreams on the other hand these detachments also create space for new opportunities 
learnings and learning as the death of the old brings in the new and while carrying the bare bones baggage of one's identity, thoughts, and emotions. Uh, I did two mixed media in this work. Uh, it's called It's Good to Be Home and Safe Place. So it's So this is like, I want to explore comfort and belongingness and uh, like a house surrounding the body and, and the heart. It's basically like trying to find home uh, in this place. <laughs> so with that, this one is self-entitled. It's a wood carved on acrylic, it's called Luntian. It's a self-titled self from the show. Uh, it's it's a picture of man with like all green, like signifies signifies you know the embodiment of a greener pasture. But it also had this uh, uh, slide on on one side that's kind of with with, uh, with the human face. So I'm just trying to say that, you know, like there's, there's always a danger. There's always this, you know, uncertainties when you go somewhere to find a new home or if you get displaced and, and trying to, uh, trying to reconnect with, with your new found surrounding. Uh, this piece that I'm about that, last that I'm about to show you is actually supposed to be not part of the show, but my good friend tells like, it's actually my favorite. Uh, it's from, it's from a previous show, but I decided to join, uh, in, uh, include it here basically because it's how most people feel about right now with the pandemic. So it's polar wanting to go out, people want to be back in normal. Uh, so this is entitled The Horizon is Burning. Uh, I, uh, it's a figure of a man uh, trying to weigh in a black heart. And uh, there's a written uh, words in uh, Mata or Bye Bye In. It's, uh, it's an, it's, uh, an old way of writing in the Philippines. It's uh, the the word says pag-asa or hope. So you're trying to find hope uh, and trying to weigh hope uh, that it's still you know like that it's still on the uh, that you wanted to like find it and and trying to not to lose it, even if it's hanging on a thread. Uh, well, with that, uh, like my my main conclusion though is, uh, it seems like life has propelled the artist to, like life has propelled us towards greener pasture this whole time as ha as now as the whole time as. We find ourselves planting roots in a strange place, the most distant from birthplace. We dream of a better life and fresh beginning with the family. Um, this show, Lumpian, find opportunities, unfurling, turning chance and circumstance into turning points for growth. Uh, for me, this is a time for continued cultivation and expansion of art production, concept budding, flowering, and sprouting abundance. Uh, before, before I end though, I want something that, that I actually, we, I prepared, uh, I prepared a lot for this show and I wanted to show you something that 
I want you to experience uh, personally. So usually my shows is uh, I'm using uh, light effects to kind of enhance the painting and kind of let the painting speak uh, something. Wait, now I, I saw the camera, but now it's gone. <laughs> okay, so with this though. Uh, I'll go and turn off the light. Uh, if you have a question, please do shoot. Shoot me a message and this one. So you're saying uh, I'm using a light effects, uh, making the painting glow. Uh, I'm usually I use paintings that are photo and and glow in the dark. So they are. That's why they, they kind of react with the lights. Uh, so giving you some, yeah, give me some few moments to like just stare at the paintings. And if you have some questions, please do, uh, please do write and I can answer it later. If you're watching from the Philippines, uh, just raise your hand. Thank you. Oh, I did. Hi, Earl. So, uh, these are my female figures. Hi, Ate Mabik. Number two, hi, Let's say number two. So I guess uh, my most favorite part is the abstract. There's actually, so the abstract things that I did, I'm not representation, representational, thank you. Um, these are, I was in, inspired by a picture that I saw on the internet uh, after like the series of like the Black Lives Matter, some racist issues that I, I've seen. And uh, then I saw this picture of uh, mushrooms that are so well organized in one place. It's like they, they call it like a, a mushroom bouquet. So I'm inspired by that and that's why I created this. Uh, the, main, the main thing is that like, I kind of see it as like, uh, like with all this thing that's happening around the globe, uh, why can't we just be connected together? Why can't we just live in harmony? Why can't we just live at peace with each other? That's why I called it coexist so that we can just like be coexist with each other, you know. And another one, I always, I love heart. I love painting heart, drawing heart. Um, these are, these are my favorite from the show. It's like breathing. It's like, you know, talking to you with these lights effect. So if I try to see if uh, you have some questions right now. But I can see anything. Okay, so uh, yeah, um, I can see the questions actually. So if you have, I'll turn on the back of lights. If you have some questions, uh, let me know. And uh, Alana, can can you help me out? Because I, I there's nothing. Uh, Going in my screen. Yeah, you can't see the Q and A box here. Yeah, I can. Sorry. Okay, uh, Christina has a question for you. She asks, "Did anyone inspire the people we see in the paintings?" Actually, yes. Um, most of most of them are actually 
uh, not direct inspiration, but uh, like stories from my friends, you know, like uh, they've been telling me stories of how, how they, they wanted to be, um, like grow and have hope. So this, this, this series of portraits are, are like a sort from my diary that, you know, the, the right, the writings that I did, uh, the journals of my motivational quotes. Yeah. So these are actually like what I'm saying to myself every time I'm so down. Um, so the, these are like the motivational quotes that I always uh, um, read and um, uh, like put into my heart all the time. So some people though are resemblance of my friends. Yeah. Did I answer your question? <laughs> Hope so. Yeah, any other question? I don't see any other questions right now, but there's a couple comments. And if you can't see them, I'll just read them to you. Um, Christina said, it's super cool to hear you speak about your works, Pat, great job. And Jess Richter says, I admire the incredible balance between the struggle and the hard work to remain optimistic. It creates such mo moving tension in this work. And just some other comments. Thank you, Jess. Yeah, congratulations and amazing work. Um, if anyone else has questions, please type Thank them you. in the Q&A box. <laughs> yeah, sorry I can't read the questions. Like, with the internet now oh, there's shows now oops it's gone again. Oh, one more <laughs> one more question from jess as well um i like that your work is an immersive experience using light and the green grass on the walls when working on your exhibitions do you have this vision in mind the whole time or does it evolve as the paintings do uh the green grass actually like ha had this in mind already so i have this concept of the show as I used to be uh, a green pasture as a show, but um, when the, when it re uh, when it started, when the summer started, I I've been seeing uh, like green grass at Home Depot and uh, <laughs> at and Lowe's. So I was like, what if I kind of use it to change the wall and the flooring. So it actually like, since it's, it's on the, it's on the concept I, I did, uh, like um, use it as part of the so, Thank you for that question. We have another one here from Earl or a couple more. Um, they ask, what is your advice to an aspiring artist who is struggling in creating a composition with a successful storytelling? Because I struggle on that a lot. <laughs> okay, uh, well, it's, I guess it's every artist's struggle. The thing is that you have to be true to yourself until you find yourself like true to your subjects, true to your um true to your subjects uh and like if you found if you find yourself uh uh like if you try to compose yourself as as uh as you are the subject or or try to uh uh what do you call this um uh, if you're breathing and thinking about your subject all the time that's the time that you'll be able to like compose it better. Um, don't don't try to paint something that you are not. Uh, sometimes like some advices that I hear is that like try to copy master's work and then you'll find your your style or your own. The thing is that you're still copying, but you have to be true to yourself. What do you want it to paint? What do you want? What are the subjects that you want to explore? So those are the main things that you need to answer before you can do a painting. Uh, your, uh, everyone struggle for composing an artwork because they don't have 
the idea yet in mind. They don't know what to paint. They get easily distracted by the other, like the other pictures and paintings that they see online or in, in the internet. And, and because, uh, we, it, because we don't have that strong wheel, uh, a strong um, uh, subject in, in ourselves yet, then we get swayed by, by what we see. So my, my, my best advice would be, be true to yourself. Find, find, your, find what, you, what interests you the most. Then you'll be able to, and shut it down, uh, make it, diary uh, write everything and as time progresses you, you just look back to it and uh, challenge yourself to draw every single detail and you know a, a big composition a big painting is something that does not happen overnight it's a series of practice for each uh, painting you know like uh, for every details that in in it, uh, there will be like a study. So just keep you know keep studying your work and meditate on it. I guess yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Looks like we have about three more questions here, so I'll just give you the next one. Jess okay. says, your work is really personal. Personal. Do you consider any of these pieces a self-portrait? Uh, Lintian is uh, my self-portrait. Uh, this is, that's why I called it Lintian. So this is actually a self-portrait. Uh, I, I wanted to title it before as like predator and prey but uh as it comes out it just evolved to a green being and having the concept as green pastor i named it luntia uh actually every show that i i, I do i i make a self-portrait and this is for the show this is uh uh one of those thank you Okay, next question. Uh, I think it's Kay or Kai says, congratulations, Patrick. How has your experience as an immigrant affected your artistic production? Do you find your works are more emotional now or more cerebral? In terms of material, do you have a wider choice of paint colors and medium? Uh, is that Ati Kay? <laughs> Hi, Ati Kay. Uh, well, my work is more, I think it's, I it became more personal now because I'm trying to like this body support only came about a month ago after after I I I had to take some time off from work. Um, uh, that's the only time that I really spend the most time painting, and it's it's something that you know I I thought I would not be able to do anymore. And uh, with, with, in terms of materials, um, there's a lot available online. It's not cheap, but at least it's, uh, it's available. So I'm, you know, uh, good thing there's Amazon and eBay. So um, it's, it's really different from like, having to source out your materials way back in the Philippines because uh, I find it like materials are cheaper there. But here, um, some, some materials are so expensive. And uh, yeah, um, I also have, like most of my works are textured acrylic lines. Uh, um, but now I'm, I'm trying to, like my biggest piece doesn't have any lines of it. I mean, no texture, it's just plain acrylic pen that I uh, used. So uh, I'm trying to explore that more because uh, it's, I'm getting old and my hands are getting sweaty. <laughs> so yeah, I hope I answered your question. 
All right, a few more popped in here. Uh, what's your favorite work from the show and why? My favorite work from the show? Uh, actually, my biggest piece, because it's, uh, um, it's, it, it took me the longest time to, uh, to create. Plus, uh, it kind of summarized everything that's on the show. That what I wanted to, uh, to tell, what I wanted my viewer to see and uh, feel. So everything is in there. So that's uh, uh, Pudla is my favorite painting. Yeah, I should go ahead. Yeah. Love that piece too. <laughs> um, okay, Dan you. Danielle has a question for you. She asks, can you talk a bit about the recurring images like the paper cranes and the patterns? What is the significance? Okay, the paper cranes is, uh, is a symbol of like, you know, going, going and going in and going out. So uh, I, I use that. It's like uh, I think it applies to immigration and uh, the patterns that is inside and in, uh, the recurring patterns are are like coral-like uh, species. You know, uh, again, uh, like what I said earlier, it's 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 uh, inspired by, by a colony of mushroom and corals that like coexist with each other. So try to bend it with the hair and make it feel like they're also one with the with the person. Yeah. Hope that answers you, Danielle. <laughs> Thank sure. you. She can ask you more about it later, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, we have yeah, one she's back to the year. <laughs> <laughs> one more here from Vera. And she asks, as you spend more time here in Canada, your new home, do you think your work will change or will it always be influenced by where you grew up? Well, culture is, my, my culture is uh, like kind of ingrained to me already. But I've seen that some of my elements have, uh, I, so, some of the elements that I use now are particularly influenced by by my environment. So, uh, yes, it's evolving colors. Uh, I think my works are more mature than before. Uh, and yeah, and it, it definitely has something to do with my environment, with me being here in Canada. So yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for that. And uh, I'm looking forward also on creating more works that has uh, as a has a better connection with with where I live in, though I know that art is like a universal language, no, but it is really different. It is really different when you you connect with your community, and your work connects to your community. So that that's one thing that I always uh, uh, admire of of uh, attaining. Yeah. So. Yeah, is there, if there's, like, uh, are we time's up or <laughs> is there uh, We just have one final comment and that's, that's it for questions. So yeah, you can wrap it up. Gordon just says, very thoughtful and thorough presentation of works and I will have many questions for you after giving it more thought. <laughs> oh, Gordon, Gordon made it. <laughs> Thank you, Gordon, for uh, watching. Uh, uh, he's watching uh, pro straight from the Philippines in Palawan. Uh, he's uh, actually from Alberta. He's a good friend. Thank you, Gordo. Uh, yes, uh, if you have more questions, just uh, message me. We can do a video chat to kind of explain you more of my works. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for joining me. Thank you for um, uh, like for this. 30 minutes of, you know, stutter and nervousness. <laughs> and uh, I hope if you're in Regina, uh, please visit this show. I know it's COVID, but we have, um, we have a special like appointment 
that you can go on to the Junction website. Uh, you can book in an appointment and uh, we're here 12 to 8 on the 26th. Uh, I'm always here weekdays from 5 to 6 in, in case you wanted to meet me and explain to you the works. Uh, we just require mask if you're coming in. If you're sick, please uh, maybe uh, reschedule it some other time. Uh, as long as you're with, you wear mask, you wash your hands and sanitize for us to be, you know, uh, free from COVID. And that will be, well, uh, very much appreciated. And without, if you don't have any more questions, please visit the SAS now, uh, uh, Sorry, now um, website to view more of my paintings. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining me here. Yeah, uh, maraming salamat. Bye-bye.